seize Severodonetsk and take control of the lysychansk bakhmut highway. These are among the main tasks now facing the Russian occupation troops, according to the head of the Luhansk Regional Military Administration, Serhii Haidai. This means that there will be more shelling in the Luhansk region. The Russian army continues firing at Severodonetsk. However, the Ukrainian servicemen do not allow the enemy to advance. 50% of the city has already been cleared of the Russian occupiers. But in the next five days, the number of artillery shelling and air strikes may increase several times. According to the interceptions, we understand that the commander of the Russian army received two tasks. The first is to capture Severodonetsk by June the 10th, and the second is to completely control the Lysychansk Bakhmut Highway by June the 10th. Therefore, we expect in the near future that all the reserves that they have available, all the equipment and all the personnel that they have they will throw exactly to fulfill these two tasks. Serhii Haidai, head of the Luhansk Regional Military Administration. The Russian occupiers shelled more than 20 settlements in the Donetsk and Luhansk regions over the past 24 hours, destroying and damaging 41 objects. Most of them were residential buildings. A hospital was also shelled. Seven people were killed. All day long there were explosions in Kharkiv. Russian troops have not stopped striking in the residential areas of the city. They hit with artillery and mortars. Fighting also continues in the Kharkiv region. The enemy equips their positions and mines the approaches to them. Ukrainian servicemen continue to fight back against the enemy. Fighting continues on the territory of the Kharkiv region. The Russian occupiers are trying to bombard the positions of Ukrainian defenders and hold previously seized territories in the Kharkiv direction. The Russian troops used phosphorus ammunition near Cherkaski Tishki. The situation remains the hottest near Izum. The occupiers are attempting an offensive. The armed forces of Ukraine hold their positions and inflict tangible losses on the enemy. Oleksiy Nyhubov, head of the Kharkiv Regional Military Administration. Almost 60% of the Zaporizhia region was occupied by Russian troops. This was reported by the head of Zaporizhia Regional Military Administration, Oleksandr Staruch. He also noted that 77 settlements were left without electricity due to the hostilities. More than 2,700 objects of infrastructure were destroyed. However, Ukrainians from temporarily occupied settlements continue to come to the region, Staruch noted. Special humanitarian hubs are being created for them in the region. For the last 15 days, the largest number of people come from the Kherson region. Also, people arrive from Mariupol. Oleksandr Staruch, head of the Zaporizhia Regional Military Administration. Heavy fighting continues near Mykolaiv. Ukrainian military positions were shelled by the Russian occupiers with banned by conventions Sonsepok heavy flamethrower system, which uses thermobaric ammunition. Missile strikes were launched by the enemy troops on residential areas in the Mykolaiv region. In Ochakiv, as a result of shelling, several people were wounded and buildings were destroyed. Uragan multiple launch rocket systems and artillery were also used by the enemy while shelling Mykolaiv. Three people were killed and several more seriously wounded. According to Hanna Maler, Deputy Minister of Defense of Ukraine, Kiev remains almost the main target of the Russian occupiers, therefore it is constantly under threat. The day before, a series of explosions went off in the capital early in the morning. The missiles flew from the Caspian Sea. They hit the left bank of the capital. As a result, one workshop of the Darnitsa car repair plant was destroyed and several more were damaged. The blast wave blew out the windows of the administration and personnel premises. I only heard loud noises around 6 o'clock. Sharp sound. Well, I heard it at 6 o'clock. I thought it was thunder. First of all, we are used to it. Secondly, I was expecting this. I heard missiles flying and then explosions, but nothing else. In the Donetsk and Luhansk directions, Ukrainian servicemen repulsed seven enemy attacks and destroyed 20 units of equipment. Air defense units shot down a Russian K-52 attack helicopter and an unmanned aerial vehicle in Donbass. Reported by Marina Stepanenko, Mariana Kretchet, UATV News.